So just, you, you go back to psychedelics and cannabis. Um, talk to me about that as far as <laughs> sp spiritual practices. I mean, you've had your own experience um, at Cambridge, or I think originally with LSD. Um, I recently had uh, some ayahuasca ceremonies last year that I could talk about that were very, you know, revelatory to say the least. Um, how do they play out in this book when you talk about those? Well, what I'm interested here is the, the use of psychedelics as a spiritual gateway or portal or rite of passage. I think for many people they actually have that role. I think cannabis does as well. Um, sometimes they're purely recreational. I mean, a lot of people who smoke cannabis at parties are not doing it for a spiritual experience. But traditionally it has been used in the spiritual context and I'm, as I say in this book, um, the first time I actually took cannabis, I was in India. I was traveling through India from Cambridge on my way to Malaysia, where I spent a year studying rainforest plants. It was in 1968, an exciting time to be in India. Why? Um, Why was it exciting? Well, it was the very height of the flower power. The Beatles had been to see the Maharishi. There were the 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 war hadn't happened in Afghanistan and places. There were hippies traveling over land through Afghanistan to India. India was full of hippies and groups of people in VW buses and stuff. I mean, this was a, like a discovery by the counterculture of India. Um, and it was when people were very starry-eyed, you know, they would hear all the mysteries of the East and you could go to explore them and so on. I hadn't gone, I was uh, stopped off on my way to Malaysia to do um, a Royal Society funded project on uh, rainforest ferns. I mean, so I was there. You weren't on the flower power trip. I wasn't on a flower power <laughs> okay. trip. And okay. I hadn't driven across Afghanistan in a battered VW bus. Um, but, and when I was in Delhi, I ran into the only person I knew in India um, uh, by chance, a graduate student friend from Cambridge who was doing an anthropological fieldwork project in a village in the Himalayas. And he said, I'm going to my village, do you want to come? So I said, yes, and I delayed my flight and my arrival in Malaysia and um, went with him up to the village. It was several miles from uh, the nearest roadhead, I mean, several hours walk actually, and um, no electricity. It was, um, you know, it was simple old style Indian life. Um, he spoke the local language, he knew most people. We went for a walk one afternoon. We walked along a river, a mountain river. There was a cave beside it, and there was this figure in orange robes sitting there with a beard and long hair, the local holy man, Sadhu. And um, he beckoned to us, and he said to my friend, you know, come, he knew him, and, and he spoke the language, my friend spoke the language. He invited us to sit down, then he brought out a chillum, and he said to me, have you smoked Shiva's holy plant before? And I said, no, I, I didn't really know what he meant. And so he did an invocation to the god Shiva and then gave, showed me how to smoke it and passed me this clay chillum. And it was an incredibly strong cannabis. So I was suddenly blasted into this altered state of consciousness, which was in the midst of the Himalayas with a stream flowing down, the sadhu in orange robes. You know, I'd only been in India four or five days. Um, it was all utterly exotic. And I had this incredible experience of mind opening, open to the sky, the earth, the mountains, I mean, part of nature connected with everything. It was a real um, revelatory experience for me. And that was my first experience of cannabis. So the idea that cannabis could have a spiritual dimension right from the beginning of my experience with it has been a very important part of it. Mm. You know, I didn't smoke it as sort of drunken party and, or, or something like that for the first time. I, it, it was in a, a sacralized experience.